What's up guys? Today we're going to be testing some brand new makeup from CoverGirl. They have new four pan eyeshadow palettes, some yummy glosses. I'm also going to be trying their dewy tint for the first time. I'm also going to do a wear test and we're going to see if CoverGirl is making a comeback because I honestly haven't been this excited about CoverGirl makeup in a really long time. So let's go ahead and jump in and get started. All right guys, so let's go ahead and jump in and get started with the Clean Color Eyeshadow Palette. So these retail for $13.99. They claim to be a 100% clean vegan formula free of talc, mineral oil, paraben, and fragrance. They're Leaping Bunny approved, cruelty-free, and they're infused with plant-based rice extract. They claim that they're non-chalky and long-lasting, and I feel like they have some really beautiful color stories here from warm tones to cool options. There are nine altogether. I have five of them, and I think that they honestly swatch beautifully. They're not the same ultra silky, like really thin formula that CoverGirl's had for many years. I was not a fan of that one. These are completely different. They have a more velvety feel. They're very rich, pigmented, and I'm just really excited to put these on my eyes because they swatched so well. So when I saw these, I almost thought that they were coming for e.l.f. with the bite size palettes. They look so similar, but these are actually much bigger than those. So I guess that kind of helps with the difference in price a little bit because these are way more expensive than the bite size palettes, but maybe the formula is even better. We'll see. I feel like these are closer in size to the new Wet n Wild Color Icon 5 pan eyeshadow palettes, but even though they're a slightly larger size, I still feel like they are very travel friendly. They're really slim and compact and I love that about these. So which one am I going to try today? I think I'm going to put on Mellow Mauve. This one kind of will go with my purple sweater a little bit. So I'm just going to go ahead and apply my Sigma eyeshadow primer in the shade Ignite. I love this because it cancels out all of the redness or discoloration on my eyelids. It just makes a nice even canvas for applying makeup. And I think I'm gonna start with this lighter purple shade right here. Going in with my BK Beauty 212 brush. Okay, so far showing up nicely. I wasn't the biggest fan of the old formula from CoverGirl because it was almost like too silky. The shadows didn't feel like they gripped to my eyelids and they were just kind of like blend away to nothing. And while I'm applying these, I just want to quickly talk about clean beauty because I feel like the whole concept of clean beauty is kind of flawed. They're claiming it's clean because they're removing so-called harmful ingredients like parabens and mineral oil, which by the way, haven't even proven to be dangerous anyway. And I feel like by default, they're kind of saying that other beauty brands that aren't clean are, what, dirty? Are they harmful? If you're replacing really well-known preservatives like parabens in a formula and you're using a quote-unquote clean alternative, that can sometimes lead to a shorter shelf life and then they can grow bacteria more easily. So, I mean, talk about not clean. And I know that some of those brands like at Sephora that are clean, Tower 28, for example, some of the products that I've gotten from them have gone off or turned very quickly. And if you're not somebody who just uses up your beauty products really fast, that can be a problem. You could go back six months later and realize that, guess what? I can't use this because it smells funky now. Or worse yet, you do use it because it seems fine, but it's riddled with bacteria. You don't know. So 
So for me, unless something is really, truly proven to be dangerous, I'm not going to jump on that bandwagon. And I think that kind of brings me to the next point, too, which is all the fear mongering around clean beauty. I'm just going to use this shade next to kind of deepen up my crease and outer corner. There's a lot of fear mongering going on, especially when it comes to talc products. We've heard about the Johnson & Johnson lawsuit that was in the news with the um, baby powder where women got cancer from it, or the makeup from Claire's that was contaminated with asbestos. And that is an issue with talc because talc and asbestos exist really close to each other in the earth. So sometimes when they mine talc, it gets contaminated with the asbestos. So it's definitely something to keep aware of. And even though the FDA doesn't regulate cosmetics, they do regular testing of cosmetics for asbestos contamination. They have a whole section about it on their website. It actually says that they select products based on various factors, including the type of talc containing cosmetic product, the price range, popular products on social media and in advertisements, and also products that are marketed to children and to women of color. And I totally get erring on the side of caution. When I first heard about those issues with talc, I was really nervous too. But people and companies acting like every potential piece of makeup that has talc in it is contaminated with asbestos is just not true. If it were, then a lot of these things would be coming up in the FDA's testing. I feel like normally it's just these sort of more obscure brands like the Claire's makeup, for example, you don't know where that's coming from and where they're actually sourcing their talc from. It's probably not a reputable talc mining company. So yeah, I do think that there is a lot of fear mongering and I think that clean beauty is just another one of those trends that companies are hopping onto. But one thing that I really love about CoverGirl is the fact that they've gone cruelty free. There are really the three big brands at the drugstores, CoverGirl, Maybelline, and L'Oreal and L'Oreal and Maybelline have still not gone cruelty free. So I love that they're doing that and I love that they're also vegan as well using carmine in eyeshadow which is those little crushed up bugs. Even if you're not a vegan some people are just allergic to that. So I think that it's nice that they didn't include it. I'm just going to apply um, this shade right here on my lid this shimmer shade. So far I feel like these shadows are applying really nicely. They have a very high-end feel, and I have to say, those mattes really had nice grip to my skin. They blended beautifully. I am impressed right now. I feel like this shimmer shade has a little bit of fallout, and I didn't use my glitter primer today, which I usually do, but I just wanted to try these shadows without that and see how they just applied on their own. But even though they seemed a little crumbly when I picked them up out of the pan, I didn't have any fallout going onto my face. All right, so this actually applied really nicely. I am gonna do a wear test and let you guys know how it holds up throughout the day. But I mean, upon first application, thumbs up so far. I think it's really good. I would actually say I like the application better than the e.l.f. Bite Size palettes or the Wet n Wild ones. Next for mascara, I'm gonna use the CoverGirl Lash Plumping Mascara. It's been a while since I used this one, so I can't remember how I felt about it. So let's try it again. I just wanted to do like a full face of CoverGirl today. This is a relatively new product for them. It came out a few months ago. All right, I feel like it gives a pretty decent amount of length and volume. It's not like the biggest lashes that I've gotten from a mascara, but I think my lashes actually look pretty good. They're not clumpy. It's a little bit of a wetter formula, but I didn't feel like things were, you know, it was making my lashes clump together or anything. Next, I'm just gonna use a little bit of their Simply Ageless Triple Action Concealer. This is also a relatively new product for them. It came out around the same time as the mascara, and this doesn't have an actual concealer wand. It's like a ceramic tip that basically you're just supposed to dot the concealer this way and then use the tip to roll it back and forth. It's kind of like a cooling applicator, but I actually don't like to use it. I just find that it doesn't blend the concealer very well. So I'm just gonna pat it in with my finger. But despite not liking the packaging, I actually do like this concealer. I think it gives decent coverage, but it looks really natural, very skin-like. So I'm just gonna apply a little bit under my eyes and around my nose area where I tend to get the most redness. It's a really weightless formula. And if you have dry skin or you have like dry patches and things, I don't find that this concealer clings to them, which is really nice. 
Next, I wanna use the Simply Ageless Wrinkle Blurring Powder. I have it in the shade Classic Ivory, and I actually like to use this as a foundation powder because it has really great coverage if you use the puff that comes with it. If you use a brush, it's definitely a lot more sheer. But when I use the puff, it just kind of smooths out my skin. It covers just about everything, but it looks so natural. And I'm 45 years old, I have really dry skin. I typically don't wear powder at all, but for some reason, this one just kind of smooths over fine lines and wrinkles. It doesn't settle into pores. It looks beautiful. I have an entire video on just this one powder, so I'll leave that link down below in case you want to check it out. I have some close-ups and before and afters and things like that. Moving on, let's talk about these all over dewy tints. These are not new either, but I don't hear a lot of people talking about them. They've been on the Ulta website for a while, but I haven't seen them in drugstores. So these are $10.99 each, and they're supposed to be a three-in-one tint for eyes, lips, and cheeks. And they come in six shades. I have four of them. They're also vegan, cruelty-free, and they have vitamin C, coconut milk, and aloe in the formula. And they're sort of a serum texture similar to the ColourPop Cheek Dew. So if you like that, I think you'll really like these. And one of the things I love about these is that they really dry down all the way. So even though they're a little more sheer, you can build them up, you can layer them and get more color. So I'm gonna use the shade 300 Mauve Kiss. And I just like to dot them on with my finger and just kind of pat them in like this, especially if I'm going over a powder because if I do a swiping motion it may take away some of the base product underneath but I find that if you just pat it like this it doesn't do that so that's one layer see it's just really sheer so I'm just gonna go in and grab a little bit more these are really awesome if you are a first-time blush user if you've never used blush before or if it just scares you a little bit and you're kind of like I don't wanna have clown cheeks or have it look too bold these are really kind of almost impossible to mess up because they're just very sheer and natural looking. It kind of looks like the blush is coming from within your skin rather than sitting on top. But that being said, if you like a really heavy blush look, then you may have to apply a lot of these to get it to really like show up the way that you want it to. So I feel like this product is best for people who like a very natural blush look. And then moving on, I have some new lip glosses from CoverGirl also. These are called the Clean Fresh Yummy Gloss. And I did see these on the Ulta website. They showed up last Sunday when the eyeshadow palettes came on. And now I just went to look for them again and they're not there. So I don't know if they'll be back by the time this video is up. I happened to find them on Amazon because even though they were on the Ulta site, they had all of the colors kind of grayed out. You couldn't purchase them yet. So maybe they just released them too early. I'm not sure. But anyway, these are $7.98 on Amazon and they they're infused with hyaluronic acid, acai, goji berry, and black elderberry. And they're supposed to have a non-sticky, weightless feel and give your lips a plush, bouncy look. And the reason they're called Yummy Gloss is because they're supposed to have yummy flavors and scents. So the two that I have are My Straw Booty and Coconuts About You. They don't really seem to offer a lot of color, but I have to say the scents are so good. The strawberry one, it smells like strawberry candy like a Jolly Rancher. It's really, really yummy, like the name says. The coconut one too is so good. It actually smells like a pina colada. It's like coconut and pineapple together. It's really delicious. So I don't know which one to apply. I kind of feel like I have a mauve purple look going on and this one is really bright and this one is kind of like not a lot of color. I guess I'll try this one and see what happens. Oh no, actually this is fine. It's kind of a cooler toned pink, so I think it'll go together. So this actually has a really big wand. You can kind of coat your lips just like in one swipe if you wanted to. It's very glossy and it has a nice bouncy cushiony feel, just like they said. It feels really nice. It's not sticky, but it's a little bit on the thicker side and extremely hydrating. It feels more like a liquid lip balm versus a lip gloss. Wow, I actually really love this. I like the texture. The hint of tint is really pretty. The smell is so good. So yeah, yeah, I'm actually very impressed with CoverGirl at the moment. I'm excited to see especially how the eyeshadow wears throughout the day. I could see these being very popular if the formula is good, and so far it definitely seems to be. CoverGirl was my favorite drugstore brand growing up, and in recent years I just haven't been as excited about their products. But I feel like they're really starting to bring it now. They have this cute and fun packaging, and they seem to be jumping on trends a little bit more, so we'll see. Anyway guys, I'm gonna go ahead and leave for now. I'll be 
back in about eight hours or so tonight and I'll show you how everything is holding up and all of that. So I'll see you guys then. Hey guys, it's about 8 p.m. It's been roughly nine hours since I applied everything and the lip gloss did wear off pretty quickly. As soon as I ate lunch, that was gone. But I did wanna try the dewy tint quickly on my lips just to see how it is. I'm kind of curious to see whether it would be drying on my lips. So I'm just gonna put a little bit of the same color that I used on my cheeks. It doesn't feel dry, it's not glossy, but it has a slightly balmy feel. Although it does dry down all the way on your cheeks, so I imagine it's gonna dry down on my lips. But this is really nice. Actually, it gives kind of like a soft, blurry effect. Kind of like if you put on a lipstick and then blotted it with a tissue or just kind of smudged it with your finger. That is actually really nice. I love how it's just kind of like a subtle tint. It just enhances your lip color, but it doesn't look like you're wearing any lipstick. It just kind of sinks right in. And my lips feel totally comfortable. They don't feel dry at all. This is really nice. They actually feel very soft. The only thing I will say though is the blush really didn't hold up on my cheeks. It's almost completely gone. I don't really see a lot of the color compared to what it looked like when I first applied it. I will say though, I think the eyeshadow looks fantastic for being nine hours in. It still looks really good. The matte shades, the shimmer, everything. Now I did wear it over my Sigma primer, so just keep that in mind, but I use that under all of my eyeshadow, so I just wanted to kind of keep it true to what I would normally do. I know it might be kind of early to say this because it's a first impression, but I feel like out of all of the little mini palettes that have come out, the e.l.f. ones, the Catrice ones, ones, the Wet n Wild. These are right up there, might even be my favorite. Just as far as first impressions, I feel like the shimmer shade was impactful, but it's not overly glittery. So it just has that nice metallic sheen. And the matte shades had such a rich velvety feel and they really gripped to my skin really easily. And these are purples too. And normally purple shades can get patchy and often don't apply the best. And these really, I mean, I felt like they were great. So I would say the eyeshadow palettes are definite hit. I really liked the blushes for how long they lasted. And honestly, I haven't looked in a mirror. I was picking up my son from school. Then I was at my in-laws for most of the evening. Then we were having dinner. So I don't know if it faded after an hour or if it was after six hours. Unfortunately, I'm really not sure. If any of you guys have tried these blushes, I'd love to hear your thoughts on them. But as a lip tint, I feel like they're really, really nice. And speaking of lips, these yummy glosses are also fantastic. Granted, they don't last very long. They are a gloss, so that's to be expected. But I love the giant applicator that they have. It's really comfortable to use, and these just feel so heavenly on your lips. They're really hydrating. They have that really nice cushiony feel, and I love that each one is a different scent depending on the name, and both of these scents that I got are really great. I just wanna put the coconut one on really quick on top of that lip tint. Mm, it smells like a pina colada. It is so good. I'd love to hear your thoughts on CoverGirl down below. Do you feel like they're going in the right direction? Do you like the kind of fun, new, exciting packaging that they're coming out with and new products? I feel like Maybelline and L'Oreal and some of the other drugstore brands should really take a page out of their book and just update themselves a little bit. And I like that these feel a little bit more young and fresh. So I'd love to hear your take on everything. And if you're new here, I hope you'll consider sticking around and hitting that subscribe button. Also, if you have a few extra minutes and you'd like to check out another video on my channel, I'll put up a playlist here of all of my Vlogmas videos from this month. Thank you guys so much for taking time out of your day to watch this video. I appreciate it so much and I will see you all in my next video. Take care guys. Bye.